Hello everyone, uh, I'm back again with another green top guideline. This time it's the management of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, so OHSS for short. This is a green top guideline and one that you will need to revise for your MRCOG part 2 revision. Um, and I've just summarised all the salient points um, that hopefully you'll need to know for the exam something that I used for my revision uh, when I was go about to take the exam. I hope you'll find the, this useful and if you do then please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and um, recommend any suggestions that you may want to uh, watch videos on in terms of guidelines or talks in the comments below. So OHSS is a complication of fertility treatment. Mild OHSS affects one third of cycles. Moderate or severe varies from 3.1 to 8%. Risk factors are previous history of OHSS, polycystic ovary syndrome, increased antral follicle count, or high levels of anti mullerian hormone. Um, so because uh, the diagnosis is a a clinical one, you want to find out uh, the symptoms and signs that your patient's experiencing and diagnose it based on that. So early OHSS is within seven days of HCG injection and is usually associated with an excessive ovarian response. Late OHSS is typically presents 10 or more days after the HCG injection and is usually the result of endogenous HCG derived from an early pregnancy. So signs and symptoms. So history, you want to find out time of onset of symptoms, relative to trigger, medication used for trigger, uh, number of follicles on a uh, final monitoring scan, number of eggs collected, what, uh, what embryos uh, replaced and how many, polycystic ovary syndrome diagnosis. Symptoms like abdominal bloating, abdominal discomfort and pain, need for analgesia, nausea and vomiting, breathlessness, inability to lie flat to talk in full sentences, reduced urine output, leg swelling, vulval swelling, associated comorbidities such as thrombosis. So examination, you want to do a general examination, look for signs of any dehydration, edema, uh, record heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, body weight. Abdominally, you want to assess ascites, palpable masses, peritoneum, uh, so looking for peritonism, uh, and measure girth. Respiratory, assess for pleural effusion, pneumonia, pulmonary edema. Investigations you want to do is full blood count, hematocrit, CRP, eusinase, serum osmolality, LFTs, coagulation profile, HCG, ultrasound scan to look for ovarian size, pelvic and abdominal free fluid, and consider ovarian Doppler if torsion is, is suspected. Other tests which may be indicated uh, based on severity, arterial blood gases, D-dimers, ECG or echo, chest x-ray, and a CTPA or VQ scan uh, if you're suspecting any thrombosis. So, um, how do you classify mild, moderate, severe? Um, quite an important uh, slide for you to remember. So mild is things like abdominal bloating, mild abdominal pain, ovarian size usually less than eight centimeters, uh, eight centimeter cube. Moderate OHSS is moderate abdominal pain, nausea plus or minus vomiting, ultrasound evidence of ascites, Ovarian size, uh, usually 8 to 12 centimeter cube. Severe OHSS is clinical ascites, oligouria has less than 300 ml per day, hematocrit of over uh, 0 0.45, hyponatremia, hyperosmolality, hyperkalemia, hypoproteinemia, ovarian size usually above 12 centimeter cube. Critical OHSS is 10 societies large uh, hydrothorax, hematocrit over um, 0 0.55, white cell count over 25, oligouria or anuria, thromboembolism, acute respiratory distress syndrome. 
life-threatening complications that are that can happen as a result of OHS as include renal failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, hemorrhage from ovarian rupture, and thromboembolism. So, out, so outpatient management can um, can be done for mild or moderate um, OHSS, and in some cases of severe OHSS as well. In outpatient management, it's very important to counsel your patient and give them information uh, to what to look out for, and also contact details um, if their symptoms worsen, how they can get in touch. Uh, you want to give them informa information particularly about fluid intake and output monitoring um, so they can uh, monitor this if um, if things deteriorate. Um, you should avoid any NSAIDs because they can compromise renal function. In severe OHSS, where you're managing it as an outpatient, you want to consider putting these patients on thromboprophylaxis, usually with low molecular weight heparin. The duration uh, would depend on if there's any other um, risk factors for thrombosis present for this patient, so it is individualized. Um, paracentesis of physicic fluid can also be done in an outpatient uh, basis. So if there is a worsening of symptoms like increasing abdominal distension and pain, shortness of breath, tachycardia, hypotension, reduced urine output, um, weight gain, and increased abdominal girth, um, also increasing hematocrit that's greater than 0.45. This may, um, you know, all these signs would uh, would would point towards worsening of the OHSS, which may mean that your patient needs to be monitored as an inpatient um, and 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 be cared for that. So hospital admission is, uh, is is recommended if the if the patient is unable to achieve satisfactory pain control, if the patient is unable to maintain adequate fluid intake due to nausea, if they show worsening signs of OHSS despite outpatient intervention and are unable to attend for regular outpatient follow-up, or if they have critical OHSS. So um, if there's critical OHSS or severe OHSS, uh, and it's persistent hemohemal concentration and dehydration, you want to uh, uh, consider uh, discussing them in an MDT meeting so you get other professionals involved and make a plan of care. For critical OHSS, for example, you may need to, uh, intensive care and you may need uh, the, the anaesthetist involved as well. Okay, so persistent hemo concentration despite volume replacement with intravenous colloids uh, would require invasive monitoring, uh, where again you will need your anaesthetist to help you out. Now, diuretics should normally be avoided uh, because they can make um, things like uh, um, oligouria uh, worse, but if there is oligouria despite adequate fluid replacement, um, then uh, and drainage of ascites, then uh, diuretics may be indicated as well. So indication of paracentesis are the first three, severe abdominal distension or pain, shortness of breath and respiratory compromise, oligouria despite adequate volume replacement. Now for patients who are undergoing uh, paracentesis and are having large volumes of fluid removed, you want to consider giving them intravenous colloid therapy. So severe or critical OHSS and uh, the patients who are being managed as inpatient, you want to give them low molecular weight prophylaxis. The duration again will be individualized based on if the patient has any other uh, risk factors for developing thrombosis. Moderate OHSS is evaluated, uh, so evaluate for thrombosis and anti-embolism stockings or low, low molecular weight heparin. So surgery is only recommended if there is adenexal torsion, ovarian rupture, or ectopic pregnancies. Now, pregnancies that are complicated by OHSS, there's increased risk of preeclampsia and preterm delivery. That's something you want to be informing your patient and something you want to be looking out for in, in your patients. Well, that's it, and I hope this was useful. And if it was useful, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will continue making lots more of this useful content for you all. Good luck revising.